a marine laboratory in the Republic of Palau, has served as the basis for research on giant clams in the tropical Pacific. The staff of the MMDC, the Micronesian Mariculture Demonstration Center, has achieved a real breakthrough in marine science technology. We've shown that giant clams can be cultivated in captivity in large numbers. The impact of this breakthrough is far-reaching. Already, programs have been established in 12 Pacific Island countries, modeled after the MMDC initiative. We've demonstrated that using technology, scientists and Pacific Island peoples can breed large numbers of giant clams in simple coastal hatcheries. The baby clams can be used to restock reefs, to provide food for local consumption, or to provide a source of income through export. During the past five years, more than 12 giant clam hatcheries have been built in tropical Pacific countries. All of these new hatcheries have benefited from pioneering research conducted in the Republic of Palau and sponsored by the Pacific Fisheries Development Foundation. Mr. Graham Usher of the Iklarm Coastal Aquaculture Center comments. MMDC work on giant clams at the MMDC has has had an impact on everybody who's working in giant clams. Um, the initial work done at the MMDC has been really been the inspiration, I should imagine, for just about everybody who's working in, in giant clams today. And um, when one starts looking at the literature on, on, on giant clam mariculture, one starts with the the work that was done at the MMDC. Conservation, local food production, and export dollar earner. There's no doubt that giant clams can be used for many purposes. An added benefit is their appeal as a tourist attraction and as pets in home aquariums. A simple and reliable seawater system can be based on diesel pumps. Yanmar diesel pumps have been used by the MMDC giant clam hatchery for five full years. We've produced more than 50 tons of clams and have made over 100 export shipments to 17 different countries. The Yanmar diesels have never disappointed us. No other seawater pump can claim a better industry track record. Producing giant clam seed in the hatchery begins with selecting mature fast-growing broodstock clams as parents. Large broodstock clams produce more eggs and healthier offspring. The hatchery crew prepares tanks that will be used for culturing the delicate clam larvae. All of the incoming water is filtered through a one micron mesh bag. The floor and walls of the tank are scrubbed and rinsed carefully. Then the standpipe is put in place and the tank is filled with seawater. One clam is sacrificed to obtain a ripe gonad. Because giant clams are hermaphrodites, the gonad contains both sperm and egg cells. The gonad also contains hormones that will induce other clams to begin spawning. Even after being stored in the freezer for many months, the giant clam gonad is still effective in inducing spawning. The gonad is mixed with seawater and held near the incurrent siphon of the clams. Only a very small quantity is needed to start the spawning process. Within a few minutes, ripe giant clams begin spawning clouds of milky sperm. Later on, millions of microscopic eggs are released into the seawater. The clams releasing eggs are transferred to individual foam boxes, where they'll continue to spawn. After spawning has stopped, the eggs are carefully counted by examining a sample under the microscope. Millions of eggs will be placed into each tank. 
the eggs develop into larvae that swim near the surface of the seawater. After about a week, the larvae settle to the bottom and metamorphose into tiny juveniles, which look like miniature adults. At the same time, the baby clams begin their symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae, the microscopic algae which live in their tissues and provide nutrition for growth. The zooxanthellae converts sunlight, carbon dioxide, and dissolved nutrients into sugars which nourish the clams. The baby clams are highly active and can even walk around using their foot. After about five months, the clam tank is harvested by scraping the seed clams off the floor and walls. An average batch can yield between 10,000 and 20,000 seed clams of about one centimeter in size. Each tank produces two batches per year. This low technology approach is simple and not very labor intensive. Best of all, no food of any kind is required in the hatchery. This helps keep production costs low. In the next few minutes, we'll look at the second phase of giant clam production, the land-based nursery phase. These clams are five months old and are being planted in trays for the land-based nursery phase. The trays are first filled with clean gravel. The clams attach themselves to the gravel with a mass of sticky threads called the byssus, but they can still be picked up and examined without harm. The clams are stocked at a high density in the tanks. This is called intensive culture, and it requires aeration to prevent depletion of oxygen in the seawater. A one horsepower air blower like this one provides excellent aeration for four large raceway tanks. At this stage, it's possible to speed up the growth rate of the clams by adding a simple agricultural fertilizer like ammonium nitrate. Experimental work at the MMDC has shown that fertilization with dissolved nitrogen speeds up the growth rate by 20% and shortens the time required to reach market size. When the clams have reached 12 months old, they're ready for market. Some will be exported to other Pacific Islands for stocking depleted reefs and for local consumption. Some of the clams will be planted on the ocean bottom in Palau and grown to a larger size for international markets, like the live seafood trade in Japan. That's right, giant clams make delicious sushi. The MMDC is now exporting live sushi clams to Japan, where there's an annual demand for over 100 tons per year. Another valuable product of the hatchery is the giant clam shell. Because only cultivated shells are sold by the MMDC, tourists can enjoy a genuine souvenir without harming the natural environment. Farming giant clams and other coral reef species is a good way to guarantee sustainable use of these valuable marine resources. In the next few minutes, we'll put on scuba gear and look at the MMDC Ocean Nursery. Once the baby clams reach an age of eight to 12 months, it's best to plant them in an ocean nursery. The water doesn't have to be deep, but it must be in a location that's sheltered from waves and storms. Just as in the hatchery, clean water is essential. A temperature range of 20 to 30 degrees centigrade and a salinity of 32 to 35 parts per thousand is recommended. For the ocean nursery phase, strong cages are required to protect the baby clams from fish, crabs, stingrays, and octopus, which might otherwise eat them very quickly. The best clam cages are simple boxes made from plastic-coated wire mesh. The mesh lets in the sunlight and keeps the predators out. A good wire cage will last for about five years in the ocean. During the ocean nursery phase, it's necessary to check the farm at least twice a week. The main requirement is to scrub the cages to remove algae, which blocks the sunlight and restricts water flow. 
Just as with any kind of farming, diligence and hard work pay off. The techniques are simple, but it's definitely not the lazy man's way to riches. In addition to scrubbing the cages, the farmer looks for predators, especially the tiny white snail called Cymacium muricinum. If not controlled, these snails can do considerable damage. Every six months or so, the clams need to be transplanted and given more room to grow. After about three to four years, the clams can survive outside the cages. This final step is called the grow-out phase. The grow-out phase is the easiest part of giant clam farming. The main consideration in the grow-out phase is security, protecting the clams until you're ready to harvest them. After watching this video, you might decide that you'd like to learn more about giant clam farming. The MMDC offers a popular training course for giant clam farmers. Already, more than 50 people from all over the Pacific have completed the program, which includes a complete scuba diver certification course. You might even be able to get a full scholarship to attend the MMDC training. So far, many agencies have sponsored students. These include the Pacific Fisheries Development Foundation, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and the International Center for Ocean Development, based in Canada. When the trainees graduate, the MMDC sends them 1,000 baby clams and 40 nursery cages so that they can apply their new knowledge immediately. From the island of American Samoa, Mr. Pio Gaisoa, a recent course graduate, comments on his training at the MMDC. The training here in Palau, I learned so many things here from the uh, hatchery. But uh, the most important thing that I learned is how to spawn uh, giant clam. And uh, after the training, I'm going to take in 1,500 uh, seeds of uh, clam to American Samoa and plant it in American Samoa. And I hope in the future I will uh, build my uh, hatchery and uh, spawning some more uh, Faisua or clam in American Samoa. Now let's join the MMDC staff as they prepare 1,500 baby clams for export to American Samoa. The clams are packed and ready to go. In a short time, they'll be living on the reef in American Samoa, contributing to the development of a new marine industry. For the Pacific Fisheries Development Foundation, I'm Jerry Hesslinger, and thanks for joining us today.